two stocks to consider in june of 2023 many of you really enjoy whenever i do this video every single month talking about two undervalued stocks that could potentially be a buy maybe for my portfolio or maybe potentially for your portfolio as well i go into detail in these companies the only problem is that these kind of videos they don't get a lot of views because i'm not targeting a certain keyword like google or nvidia or apple so all i ask is if you enjoy this video please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing if you're actually new uh, to the channel now before i start with the two new undervalued stocks i tend to quickly review the stocks i talked about in my previous video and look and at an update on them see how they performed and then i can get into the two new stocks but one of the stocks i talked about in my previous video which was a huge success it was actually geo the geo group this was a michael uh, Burry stock the stock rallied 25 and a half percent in two weeks i mean this was like one of my best gainers and then after that what happened the stock came back down like 20 or 25 percent and it's back to the same level where we talked about it in my uh, video last month and what happened with the company is it rallied 25 and a half percent in two weeks just on the catalyst that i talked about which was the title 42 and then whenever title 42 came out and stuff it wasn't as expected and then the stock reversed back down but i still believe the company is extremely undervalued especially below seven dollars per share but i was very clear that geo is not a buy and hold forever type of investment this is something you have to get in and get out of and we personally took some profits above nine dollars per share we haven't sold the entire position but we did take some profits above nine dollars per share and all of that is in my own investment group which i don't talk about it a lot in this group you could actually see whenever i buy something whenever i I sell something everything is in real time even with the options which most people don't do because they care about looking wrong i don't care about looking wrong i say exactly when i'm buying something when i'm selling something we analyze stocks together we do a lot of things and i believe this is actually one of the best things in the investment world because it's not a course where you just you know watch something and go try to do it on your own we're doing it together pretty much you know every single day so it's a hands-on learning type of experience and you get to see me do things you know in real time so if you're more of a longer term oriented type of investor you're serious or not lazy you could consider maybe joining you know the investment group but the second stock i talked about was actually bti and it's the same thing with bti it rallied five and a half percent after the very and then it came back down and i was very clear that with bti we have a covered call strategy because the stock is very predictable as you could see it's at the same price it was trading at in 2019 although it's a much better company but it's a very predictable company it bounces between normally 34 to around 40 or 42 dollars so whenever it gets around 37 38 we sell covered calls and then whenever the stock goes back down we buy back the calls we sold much cheaper we collect a yield up above the eight and a half percent dividend you collect with this investment so this is what we do in my own uh, group and i personally believe that bti is very undervalued i don't see anything wrong with the company like something major that actually changed other than some things with the management but most dividend stocks are actually just going down on their own stocks like verizon it's coming down stocks like coca-cola procter and gamble you know walgreens many other you know utility stocks pretty much all the dividend stocks and this is only because we're having a risk on rally where stocks like nvidia nasdaq goes up risk off investments like verizon like i don't know walgreens like the REITs actually come down because they are risk off and there's money now is a risk on but it's not going to stay risked on forever. It's eventually going to ro rotate into risk off type of investment, into safety investments. And this is where British American Tobacco could potentially catch a massive bid. So I still believe the company is undervalued. Now, the first stock that I'm going to talk about today, and this is a stock I talked about it before, but the second stock is actually a new stock that I haven't talked about before. But this one, in my opinion, it's one of the most undervalued stocks in the stock market and it's actually cvs cvs sells and i talked about it when it was like 75 or 76 dollars per share and it just keeps going down now it's around 67 dollars per share i'm not trying to call a bottom on it but i believe it's very misunderstood and it's extremely extremely undervalued and i'm gonna show you exactly why here in this video now i'm gonna show you some things from the past and you tell me what you believe is a fair multiple for something like cvs which i believe is a pretty, pretty good you know exercise 
size. Now, if you look at the EPS of the company, from 2016, it was $5.84 per share. Now it's around $8.69 per share. So it's not actually declining in EPS or declining in earnings. It's growing. It's a growing company. It's not some dying company that's declining. It's actually still a growing company, even though it's a slow grower. Now, if you look at, you know, something else, like in the future, you might believe that, yes, you know, they grew EPS from 2016, but maybe the stock is going down because CVS cannot grow anymore, which is actually not true. The company is expected to go from 863 of EPS to around $11.93 of EPS five years from now. So it's still a growing company. It grew in the past. It's expected to keep growing in EPS in the future. And they also have, you know, pretty good returns on capital. They have been improving from 7% to 10.5%. It's not the highest return on capital in the world, but it's growing, it's improving, it's very good you know, for the company. And the company also has a 3.5% dividend. And it also operates in a necessity-based industry where most of their free cash flow is actually predictable and stable. It's not Carnival Cruise Line, and it's not an airline. Now, you're looking at all those metrics for a growing company, 3.5% dividend, pretty good returns on capital. Where would you think CVS could be trading at? Maybe 12 times earnings? you know 10 times earnings or maybe something like 15 times earnings well cvs is actually trading pretty close to seven and a half times earnings now to me this is a massive mispricing it's pretty close to where it traded at at the covid lows at the covid lows the stock bottomed at 7.31 now it's at 7.81 in terms of you know uh, guided EPS, which is eventually going to be met. But seven and a half times earnings, in my opinion, is very undervalued for a company like CVS. The mean for the company was 12 and a half times. Now we're sitting at 7.8 times for this company, which I believe is very undervalued for a monopoly in the healthcare space like CVS, because CVS, they have the pharmacies, they have Aetna, which is the insurance company, and now they have Signify Health and Oak Street Health, which is more in primary care. And they have all this ecosystem together in my opinion this is very undervalued for a monopoly like cvs i think cvs should be trading at minimum 10 times earnings maybe 12 to 13 times it could potentially trade at 15 times a few years from now if the company and the market actually realize the value but the main reason this stock is going down is because of the uncertainty around signify health and oak street health those are their two new acquisitions one of them is more in terms of in-person care i mean in-home care the other one is more around you know clinics and primary care type of things and systems and some other things i talked about in my other videos but they paid around 20 billion dollars for those two acquisitions combined and both of them are actually unprofitable which is causing you know a lot of confusion with cvs because cvs you know does have a lot of debt and if you look at the company where you know the balance sheet they have around 14 and a half billion of cash and cash equivalent if you look at their debt they have 56 and a half billion of long-term debt and they have you know other long-term insurance liabilities around 5.6 billion and other long-term liabilities of 6.6 .6 billion so this is close to, together i mean somewhere around 12 billion and 56 billion this is somewhere i mean around you know 68 billion dollars or 69 billion dollars and you take the 14 and a half is somewhere around 55 56 so let's take 55 billion dollars of net long-term debt i mean it's a lot of debt right and how can the company even deal with it well the company actually is producing free cash flow 12 and a half to 13 and a half billion of cash from operations we can take the middle number of 13 billion cash from operations their capital expenditures are around 3 billion this would leave us with 10 billion of free cash flow the company pays out 3 billion dollars every year in dividends so this is a net net of 7 billion dollars every single year that the company can use to pay back the debt to buy back stock to do all kind of things so yes you could even put in the high number maybe 60 or even 65 billion of long-term debt which is actually very very high but the company has 7 billion dollars of growing net Net, net free cash flow after they pay out the dividend after everything else that they can actually use and either buy back stock or pay down the debt and it's a necessity industry it's not carnival cruise their free cash flow is predictable it's not all over the place so i personally really like the company i think it's very very undervalued i think the stock is extremely extremely 
you know, oversold. And it doesn't mean this is the bottom on CVS. It doesn't mean the stock can't go lower. Maybe, you know, it goes to 60 or 62. A lot of people on YouTube told me, you know, in the comments is going to $52 or something. I don't personally believe this could happen. I mean, it would just be extremely undervalued. Like the company can buy back so much stock at $52. I mean, I don't know where it's going. Maybe low 60s. I personally feel it's going to low 60s. But I think it's very, very undervalued. And, and it's a pretty good company in general and a pretty good, you know, dividend. Now, the other stocks that I personally like very much, and I think it's undervalued, it's more of a long-term hold, is BJ's Wholesale Club. And some of you are actually not familiar with BJ's Wholesale Club. But BJ's is more like Costco here in the United States. They have smaller type of stores. They have 237 clubs with 167 gas stations in over 18 states. They have 6.8 million members where people pay a membership fee every single year and they get access to wholesale lower prices, meaning bulk item for you know families of two or three or four. And this is what BJ's does, which is pretty close to what Costco is actually doing. And this is what makes them different from Costco and Sam's Club. They have, you know, broader assortments. They actually have smaller pack sizes. I'm, you know, a customer. I was a customer at, you know, BJ's many times before. And they have smaller pack, you know, sizes, which could also work for single people, for smaller families. You don't need to buy, you know, three or four ketchups in one pack. You could buy one or two, you know, and it's actually as pretty good prices from something like BJ's compared to Costco and Sam's Club. The clubs are much, much uh, smaller. They don't have a food court like Costco and $1.50 hot dogs, which are good. They do attract a lot of people, but it's just more convenient. Like you could just go and, you know, shop very fast. You could find anything you want, what you want, you know, when you want it. They have a pretty good, you know, uh, online delivery type of business is pretty good. I tried it before. It's actually, I mean, it's actually pretty good. They have 4.8 stars on their own app. So it's pretty close to what Costco pretty much was before. And the company is expanding very, very fast. Five years ago, they were pretty much opening one club every single year. But those clubs have actually been doing well. Well, now they actually opened nine clubs in 2022. They are doing very, very well. They expect to open 11 new clubs in fiscal year 2023 and then 10 new clubs every single year for pretty much for the future. So the company is pretty much what where Costco was at like 15 or 20 years ago. But this company is actually selling at 15 times earnings. You could look as the company started to realize the value. It went up to 21, 22 times earnings because it is a pretty underrated company. But the market started to realize the value. The company went up to 20 times earnings, 21 times earnings, and it collapsed right now to 15 and a half times. There's very good reasons for that. One of them is because we're having a risk on rally. You look at Coca-Cola stock, it's going down. You look at Procter & Gamble, it's going down. Even Costco was going down. But B BJ's did get hit very, very hard, especially that it's not a mega cap. It doesn't get all the inflows that Costco and Walmart actually get. But the stock has been coming down. Now we're sitting around 15 times earnings from 21 or 22 times earnings. And one of the reasons was, you know, some disappointment in terms of the comp sales between now and what they had in 2022. But 2022 was pretty much peak everything. They had also had higher gas prices. They were making more profits from gas prices. And it was just, I mean, a bubble in pretty much everything. And I don't believe it's a fair comparison, although it wasn't as bad as, you know, as I personally expected, it's, it's been pretty good, but that doesn't mean that they're going to keep just, you know, comping forever. It's not like they declined in sales, but the growth actually slowed down a little bit, you know, in this quarter. And the market, of course, freaked out because Wall Street think of this quarter and the next. They don't think over the next two, three or four or five years with those companies. But BJ's is sitting at 15 times earnings. If you look at Costco, Costco is just sitting I mean, somewhere around 34 times earnings. So 34 times earnings for Costco. BJ's is the same exact business model. It even has higher growth and longer runways than Costco. It has higher free cash flow margins than Costco. It's a much younger company, much smaller company. Yet BJ's is at 15 times. Costco is at 34 times. And this is very unreasonable in terms of valuation, which is why the market started to realize the value. It started pricing up BJ's. It went from 15 times earnings to 22 times earnings. And now it's back at 15 times. I personally believe this is a very wide gap that's eventually going to narrow in the future as BJ's BJ's continue to grow and the market kind of, you know, realizes the value, but at 15 times, 
you know, the company is not expensive at all and is doing anything you want a company to do. They are actually ramping up CapEx to open more stores. They are reducing their debt. Their debt was 2.7 billion. Now it's only 855 million, which is very, very low. They are buying back stock. They don't have a dividend, but they have their shares outstanding going down. If you look at the shares outstanding of Costco, they have actually been going up because they have a lot of stock-based compensation and they focus more on the dividend. BJ's focuses more on buybacks which I very, very much, you know, like. And if we look at the estimates for the company in terms of EPS, I didn't do my valuation model because I think the analysts did a good job here as the company claim that they're going to have low double digit, you know, in terms of EPS growth for the future. So in here, the analyst modeled around 10 or 11 percent, which I believe is very, very fair. But if you take 6, 11 for EPS in 2028, which is actually 2027 in terms of the fiscal year. And this is 611. And as I showed you in my uh, comparison of the PE ratio, BJ's went up to 22 times earnings. Costco is still sitting at 34 times earnings, which I believe is a very wide gap. Now, if the gap narrowed and BJ's got back to 20 times earnings, you know, five years from now, this is $122 per share. The company right now is sitting at 60 or $61 per share. So this is more than 100% on the upside over the next five years with BJ's. And if BJ is actually executed, I cannot see why it can't be trading back at 22 times earnings or potentially at 25 times earnings for a necessity industry in terms of groceries and stuff, which I believe is very, very undervalued for the company. But even if it ended up trading at 17 or 18 times earnings, this is is still around eight to ten percent return you know every single year with a safety company is pretty safe it's not cyclical so i think the company is very undervalued it's a you know more of a longer term oriented type of idea i believe it's a very good idea but i do share all my positions in my own investment group and i encourage you to join if you're interested but those were my two stocks for today no financial advice thank you for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you did please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another one.